Hey, good morning. It's a little chilly in here today. <laughs> but I'm here and we're gonna do this. But I'm keeping my hat on. Also, my hair's a mess. <laughs> Another reason I'm keeping my hat on. All right, let's go here. Oh, my goodness. My iPad is not. Hey, say hi if you're joining me today. We're about to get started. If you are joining me live, say hi. Tell me where you're joining me from. Tell me if you're working out with me today or you're just watching. If you're just watching, that's okay. Um, but if you decide that you want to join me at some point, um, you can connect with me on Facebook and join me live. Or you can um, subscribe to my YouTube channel. And... Um, do the workouts there. Okay, so let's start with a warm up. I don't know how much warming is going to happen today in this warm up, but so starting with nice gentle twists, um, twisting from the midsection, really reaching with your with your hands, loosening up the spine. Think about a nice tall, long spine. Um, one of the things that uh, we want to do when it comes to mobility is want to create space. Um, in and around the joints, right? So I always like to think of expansion. Expansion is my word of the year, in fact. Um, I always like to think of expansion in my in my spine and in my, my limbs, right? Just really kind of expanding because our body tends to like compress um, from sitting. Um, if you're a runner, I, I really feel like running compresses the body. I, I don't know if it actually does, but it feels like it does, right? And so, you know, if you can, Concentrate sometimes in your movements, even when you're sitting in like elongating that spine. Um, if you're joining me for the first time, I want to encourage you to uh, modify and take things at your pace, right? And so one of the ways, or a few ways you can do that. One is take rests anytime you need to. The second way is to um, take out any hopping that I do. Now, we focus predominantly in here on strength training. Um, I, that is my focus personally in the gym. I don't do a lot of like high intensity um, cardio or, or any kind of HIIT training. We, we really don't do a lot of that in here. We do predominantly strength training because I wanna help you build more muscle in your body, right? I wanna help you increase the lean body composition that you have. I wanna help you mitigate the loss of muscle as, as you age if you're a middle-aged woman. Um, and that's what I do for myself. I'm a, I'm a runner, so I do cardio um, in other capacities, and um, so I, I don't necessarily focus on cardio here, I for, focus more on strength training. Having said that, if you're just starting, another way that you can modify is you don't lift weights yet, right? Do everything I do body weight only. Um, as you get stronger, and as you learn the movements, right, where the movements start to feel a little better to you, you can add add weights gradually. So start with light weights so that you can feel the weight um, and the movement with some with a load, right? And then as you get stronger, um, and once you feel like you're comfortable with the movement, um, I encourage you to go heavy, right? Because and, and that's what I try to do now. I try to lift as heavy as I can so that the last couple of reps of the set feel you know, difficult, or perhaps I can't even finish the set, right? Perhaps I have to um, reduce the set by one or two reps just because um, the load I'm not, I'm not ready for yet, right? And so, because what we want to do is want to build more muscle on our body. Now, if you're still kind of of that thought, thinking that, you know, I'm, I'm a woman, I don't want to be too muscular, I don't want to get big, even my, my dad said that to me recently, I'm like, you are not going to get big. <laughs> my dad is a small man. I'm like, you are, you are not going to get big. And the, the reality is, as we age, it, it becomes harder and harder to actually build muscle um, because we're also fighting, you know, an, an annual decrease or a daily, like, decrease of muscle. So as you're building it, you're also losing it, right? So you're not just, like, making forward. You're, you're kind of being pulled back by the loss, right? if that makes sense. So I've added a hop, and this is one of the points in which if you're a beginner, you might want to just keep it to low impact like this. And um, 
wait till you're ready, right? Because you're not going to get all your fitness in one workout. So you don't have to go hard, <laughs> especially not in the beginning when you're already fighting a ton of mental resistance, right? Um, around what you're trying to do, right? The changes you're trying to make, the new person you're trying to become, because that's what you're trying to do. And I think we forget that a lot of times, right? We're trying to take actions that, that really are not who we are, right? Like if you are an inactive person, you don't work out, right? You don't go to the gym, you don't exercise, not part of your um, DNA right now, right? Maybe it once was, maybe you're an athlete in high school, uh, maybe you're an athlete in college, and then you got into the workforce and you, you got a family and you got you're doing other things and you know you haven't been active for 20 years, right? And so you don't identify yourself with yourself in that way anymore, right? You don't identify yourself as an athlete anymore. And that is one of the changes that you have to make as you're taking the actions is you have to identify um, with yourself differently, right? You have to tell yourself, and you got, you got to tell yourself this every single day, I, I'm an exerciser. I'm one of those people that I see that exercise. I'm an athlete. You know, I'm active. You know, I'm a, health, a healthy person, but you know, you don't, you think in your head like, yeah, I'll, I'll tell myself that when I get there, but you will not get there until you tell yourself that. That's, we have it all backwards. And for years, you know, I thought, well, when I get to this point in my life, whether it's, you know, financial, whether it's health, you know, whatever it is, when I get there, then I will live like that person does. But I'm, until I get there, I have to live like the person I am now. Which, if you live like the person you are now, guess what? You're going to stay with the same results as you are, as the person that you are right now. I mean, it's so it's so funny that it took me until I was in my 40s to learn that you know I was going about things all all the wrong way, um, or at least the harder way, right? Because the reality is, if you start to behave as a person who works out as a person who is fit, healthy, strong, you know, that prioritizes doing good by your body, right? Like, because that's really what you're trying to do. Try to do good by your body. Your body being a possession, right? Your body is, is an instrument of your mind, not the other way around. Um, you control your body, <laughs> not the other way around. Problem is a lot of us act as though our body is in control. And the truth is our mind is in 100% control of time. It's just a matter of whether we are controlling our mind or not, or our mind is loose, is off leash, right? You know, you gotta keep your, your mind on a leash. It's, it's not an off leash park in that world of ours, right? And, and, you know, when we let the mind run loose, you know, it's, some of us lose it, <laughs> right? It, it takes off outside the dog park and runs into the woods. I don't know what I'm talking about right now, but anyway, the point is, you have to become the person that you're trying to become in your mind before you can become that person in the real world, right? Um, my friend Kathleen Cameron, who, if you don't know who she is, um, look her up. She's a phenomenon, to be honest. Um, anyways, she says, and Bob Proctor teaches this, and anybody who understands how the human mind works teaches, we experience things twice. Every result we have in life, we experience twice. We experience it in our mind, in our imagination first, and then we experience it in real life. In fact, we probably experience it three times because we also experience it in our memory. We're not completed, we've got one more. Um, so picture, picture if you have a vacation coming up, right? Do you have a trip coming up? Um, I have two trips coming up. I experience those trips in my mind first, right? Because I, I plan them, I book them, I visualize them on a day like today where it's minus 25 with wind chill, 
my mind is experiencing Death Valley, California, <laughs> right? My mind is experiencing Florida in March when I go there, right? Betty's going, Betty, you're going to Florida in uh, not too, too long, just over a month, I guess, now, when you're going to be leaving, right? So your mind experiences that in its imagination first, right? And then you get to go live it, right? We do that with everything. If you have a presentation at work, right, more than likely you're going to experience it in your mind first as you practice it and as you learn it and as you, as you rehearse it, and then you're going to experience it physically when you go to do that presentation. If you're a golfer, right, you golf, <laughs> you, you visualize where the ball is going to go and then, and it doesn't always go where you, see, where you think it's going to go, but anyways, that's another, that was a bad example. If you're on TikTok right now, follow me. I'm gonna encourage you to give me a follow on Facebook and you can do these live with me three days a week. I mean, you can do them on TikTok live as well, but I'm still gonna encourage you to follow me. Follow me on Facebook and connect with me. I got my goal card in my pocket. I was talking about this on my cooking live this morning. Um, I'm not gonna show you my goal because it's a little bit private, but I will tell you my, my big goal is uh, 300 miles. 300 miles through Arizona um, in April of 2025. Okay, not there yet, but that's what I'm working towards, you guys. So everything I'm doing right now, I'm visualizing and experiencing that that 300 miler in my head first for the next year and a half, right? Okay, we're working on upper body today. We're going to start with rows. So we're going to do rows on uh, like this. Now, if you don't have a bench or um, you could use a coffee table, you could use a sofa, you could use, I've used my cooler, my, my Yeti cooler before, um, or a step, like if you have stairs, or you can just use the floor, you can just be on the floor, okay? If you're new, you're going to go really light, or even um, just do the motion, right? Because if you're brand new, you're really out of shape, it's really been a long time, let's just move your body today. And let's just create the habit of showing up and doing this together, okay? Um, all right, so let's do 10 on each side. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. So what was I telling you? I was telling you, you got to see it. You get to live your goal in your mind first, and then you get to experience in, in the real physical world, and then you gotta set a new goal. So you're constantly imagining, creating, imagining, creating, imagining, creating. What happens if you don't have a goal? What happens if you don't know where you're going? You're not imagining that goal? Well, guess what? You're gonna experience, usually, um, whatever the environment is doing. Four, three, two, and one, meaning whatever the news is telling you that's happening, whatever your friends are telling you that's happening, you're going to be a product of whatever happens around you with no control over what's going on in your own life and results, right? So uh, next one we're gonna do is we're gonna do flies. All my uh, dumbbells are over here now. So we're gonna do 10 of those. So again, you can do these without weights if this is your first week, first day. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So what happens if you don't have the image in your mind of where you're going you're gonna go wherever it is that you're thinking about right now. So whatever you know, thoughts are passing through your brain and are, are creating the image of your mind. Like, I like to think of our mind as like a movie screen. Okay, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do bent rows. We're gonna have our fist this way. And we're gonna do 10 each side. 10, nine, Eight, make sure your core is in. Seven, six, pull 
pulling with your back. Five, chest is out. Four, three, two, one. Okay, other side. Your results right now are a direct reflection of what you think about the most, and what you're most emotionally, which thoughts you're most emotionally attached to, right? So and those emotions can be negative or positive. So if your predominant thoughts are, I'm fat, I'm unhealthy, I'm bloated, three, two, one. What kind of feelings and emotions are attached to those that thinking? Well, probably shame, probably frustration, some, sometimes embarrassment, right? Um, disappointment, like um, those feelings. If those feelings are your predominant thoughts, we're gonna add bicep curls to this round, okay? So let's go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now we're going to do four, three, two, one. Okay, that is our round one. I should have put gloves on because it is cold. These weights are cold. I'm warming up, but I mean, the handles are so cold. How are you guys today? Anyways, it is Wednesday today. How cold is it where you're watching from? I ran on the trails this morning. I was not looking forward to it, I'm not gonna lie, because it was significantly colder than the last couple of days. Um, but I thought, you know, here's, here's the other reality, is we live in a world that runs on a law called the law of polarity, right? And here's something to understand in your life. And you can use this if you're going through something right now, if you're going through a difficult, like a challenge, you know, in your life. I want you to think about the law of polarity after we do our reps. Two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Tap. We live in a world where everything has an equal and an opposite. So, good, bad, hot, cold, night, day, up, down, inside, outside. Right, there's a, an opposite. When I'm going through something hard, what I remind myself of is of this law. Because I know if I'm going through a challenge, um, it means that something really good is coming. Because it has to, because it's an equal and opposite. So if you're going through something really good right now, two, three, four, five, Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You know, there's a good likelihood that something hard is coming. That's good, though, because then there's something good that comes. If you never have anything bad or hard or adverse or challenging, you never get the opposites. So basically, you never get the highs if you don't go through the lows. So and that is just reality. So if you want to live a really mundane, lackluster life, you avoid everything hard and everything uncomfortable. So I tell myself that as I headed out into the cold this morning, something great is coming from this. I don't know what it is. Four, three, two, one, but something great is coming. And lo and behold, the, the forest was unbelievably beautiful this morning. So while I was, I, while I was cold, 
moving through the forest. I, like, literally my face hurt when we started. I thought, oh, why do I live in a place where my face hurts? But I also live in a place where I get to see this incredible view in the forest in the morning when it's cold because my headlamp was shining on snow. The snow was twinkling like, like sparkling, like diamonds. And the sky was this like deep, dark, you know, royal blue. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then you could see the silhouette of the trees, you know, were all black with this backdrop. And I could tell the snow was going to just be come alive once we could see it. And then the sky turned this crazy bright orange, like sky on fire. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, to the last one. Remember I said I was trying to get two legs where I couldn't do the last one. Pretty dang close on that one. Okay, bicep curls. We're gonna do eight double doubles this time. So that was the reward, right? Now if I stayed home in my comfortable house, my fire would have been lovely. <laughs> two, three, four, five, Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'll give you guys an example. Um, every March I go to Florida, we drive. And as you're driving down south from where I live in Ontario, Canada, when you, as you drive down, the weather gets warmer and warmer. And you start to see green. And there's this feeling of just like overwhelming hope and exhilaration and joy that comes over your body, seeing green for the first time in a few months, feeling the warmth. Now you would never feel that if you never had the cold, the, the contrast of the cold winter to compare it to. And so I try to remember that anything uncomfortable, the more, you know, challenge and adversity and discomfort I welcome into my life, the more I'm going to experience on the other end, which is the highs, right? And the more I avoid that, the less the highs and lows come together and then you're just doing this, right? And so truly, um, that's the law of polarity. And it's, uh, I mean, it's a law. Okay. One more round of this. I couldn't find socks this morning, and I'm not sure whose socks I'm wearing. I think I'm wearing my son's, so I thought they were my daughter's. <laughs> I think they're my, one of my sons. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh. Remember, if you're, if you're dealing with something hard right now, there's something great coming, right? And if you're dealing with greatness, I don't want to say there's something hard coming, <laughs> but I would say you, you should look for something hard. Three, four, five, because it's time to find the next level of greatness. Three, two, one. It's not to say it's not good to enjoy the greatness for a bit, but then eventually it becomes your new norm and it's time to look for the next level of greatness again. Okay. One, two, three, Four, five, six, 
seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, I hope you have a good one of these today. It's good though. Anyone feeling yesterday? Anyone feeling your, I'm really feeling my hamstrings from yesterday. I'm not feeling them so much right now because it's too cold. <laughs> sure the, the, um, the hips are tilted, not the hips are tilted, sorry, the spine is locked, core is pulled in, chest is out. You don't want a rounded, you don't want a rounded back. My son and I are coaching a baseball team right now. I'm not baseball, we're, we're training them, like strength and, strength and conditioning. They're like 15, 14, 15 year old boys. And they always want to lift really heavy. Four, three, two, one. And I'm constantly like, dude, if you can't do it right, you're not doing it, right? Like you're not lifting extra weights when your form's not good. I don't have this trouble with adults, <laughs> especially women, but with boys, they, my son was telling me about one of the boys deadlifting 500 pounds yesterday with the trap bar, not actual deadlifts with a bar, two, three, four, with the most horrific form, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right. Okay, so next set, we're gonna work chest. So we did back and biceps on that set. And the next set, we're gonna do uh, chest and, tri and triceps. So again, if you don't have a bench, that's okay. You can use, you can do this right on the floor. And we're gonna do pr presses. Who's joining me today? I know Betty's here. I think Dawn is here. So great to see you guys. Um, all right, I'm grabbing my new weights. I bought these for myself, some heavier weights. Okay, so we're gonna start with uh, 10 presses. One, two, three, four, Five, six, make sure your feet are flat. If you're using a bench, if you're on the floor, I would say bend, bend the legs. Okay, now we're gonna do 10 flies. Oh, these handles are cold. <laughs> Ten per side. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. 
four, three, two, and one. And now we're going to do our tricep extension. So if you're joining me on TikTok today, I want to tell you guys that I will be here Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Thursdays, 9.15 or 9.30. Um, 9.30 is probably going to be the new start time for classes because if you follow me, you know that I'm doing breakfast lives every morning. So I'm making my breakfast and I'm sharing weight loss tips and I'm sharing a program called the five day drop for optimal uh, nutrition, optimal weight loss, optimal two um, strategies for building out your how you eat and your lifestyle. The program called the five day drop, two more, two does have a cost. The only cost to that program is the supplements that we use on the program, right? So the five day drop is designed to help you lose five pounds in five days, um, largely digestive bulk, which a lot of us need a digestive reset. Um, I think I've committed, my, my plan is to do the five day drop at least once every three months this year as a reset for my body, as a way to sort of just hit the control alt delete button and reset it from kind of the inside out in terms of my metabolism, in terms of my digestion, in terms of my you know inflammation. Because overall I'm, I'm not super inflamed, but the reality is I'm out pushing my body, right? Like I'm out building my body's strength, building the cardio, I'm pushing it, um, I'm, I'm putting it through some arduous physical tasks, right? And so it needs that, to me, the five day drop is a, is a phase of restoration and recovery. And so to me, I think every three months, it's a great idea to just do a full recover reset. And um, so I talk about that on my morning breakfast show two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Um, and I show you a breakfast that is, you know, a five day drop breakfast. So it'll change from time to time based on what day I'm on um, or based on what phase of the program because um, there's basically two phases to the program, five day drop and then there's an ignite phase which is kind of like a more of a lifestyle phase in between the drops but it's, it's a carb cycling program. So I'm playing around with it a little bit um, with my training right now. Because ultimately my goal is to fuel my body most effectively for what I want my body to do, right? And so um, I'm not looking to limit my physical abilities based on what I'm eating. I'm looking to fuel my body to be able to do more. more. And so um, I'm playing around with it a little bit based on this current block that I'm working on. So that's two, three three, four, four, five, five. So five more per side. So I'm live on Facebook and TikTok and Potentially, I'll be live on Instagram as well once I get that figured out. Every morning, sharing breakfast, sharing weight loss tips, sharing a lot of mindset for weight loss. Um, and then Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursdays, I come on here to do the workouts. And then these workouts get uploaded onto my YouTube channel for you to do on your own time if this timing doesn't work out for you live which I realized a lot of you it probably doesn't because it's at 9.30. Um, okay, five, four, three, 
two, one. Yes, I feel really good today. I'm not, not going to lie. <laughs> I'm feeling really strong today. Even though I was complaining in the first round. <laughs> I think that there's two pieces to you getting results this year. Um, one piece is your plan, right? One piece is your, I like to call it my vehicle. My vehicle and my roadmap. Like I need, I need the vehicle <laughs> to get to where I'm going and then I need the map and the directions to where I'm going. But do you know what's just as important as that? Is the mindset, right? And the mindset is like, without a doubt, what's gonna keep you from your results. Because the mind is what keeps you from taking the actions that you need to take. Like, the mind is what keeps you in the driver's seat, basically. And so what I've been working really hard on is coming up with a program that can you can use alongside you, uh, your co-captain, co I call it. I want to be your co-captain. I want to go be the person sitting in the passenger seat, keeping you awake on that long drive, right? Like, keeping you company, supporting you, cheering you on, um, getting you out of your head, right? Um, reminding you of what you're capable of. And so I've been trying to figure out how to do that because I know that that's equally, maybe more important than the, the vehicle and the roadmap. They're both, they're both really important, you guys. You can't get to somewhere <laughs> without a vehicle, right? Even if that vehicle is your, is your body, you, you need a way to move. Two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. So the first, the first way I'm doing that is I've I've been working on a course or a workshop that I'm launching on the 24th and 25th of January, and that workshop will be designed to explain to you, um, like how you need to change your thinking in order to get different results. The, the stuff that I'm going to be sharing with you and teaching to you changed my life and frankly continues to change my life because I implement it into every single goal that I set for myself, right? But you, you need to learn the tools. And one of the biggest tools is repetition because realistically, like wherever you're at right now, let's do two more. I think that's kind of what is a result of your thinking possibly like if if it's something in your life that you've been getting these results for a long time like if you have been if you struggled with your weight for how what how many years I mean I think there's two two different types of us there's there's those of us that have literally struggled with our weight our whole lives like since we were kids like we've never known any different right and then there's those of us that didn't struggle with our weight until we hit middle-aged years. And now we, we don't know like how to cope with that, right? And I it takes, honestly, the first step is it takes entertaining new ideas because the ideas that you have in your head are ideas that you've been carrying with you probably since you were a child, whether you've struggled your whole life or not, right? You've eaten the way you've eaten, likely, right? Since you were little, because your parents, you know, taught you how to eat, right? Fed you what you were fed. And their parents fed them that, and their parents fed, fed them that, right? Like a lot of the habits or the ideas that you have for your life have been with you your whole life, right? And so to undo that, and replace it with a new way of thinking is is it takes definitely some intentional effort and a, and a lot of repetition of a new idea. Uh, this is why I have my goal card. Oh, I left it over there because I'm working on something in my life that means really quantum leaping me to a, in a place that I've never been before. And so I have to continually repeat that in my head over and over and over again. And I do that through my thoughts, but I do it through writing it out every morning. I do it through carrying the card around so I can see it, right? And I, every time I see it, it makes me think about it again. Like, for example, let me give you an example. If you've 
been somebody who struggled with your weight your entire life, right? So let's say you've struggled with your weight, maybe you've never really been that active. Um, maybe there's challenges in your life or there's things in your life that you've never done or never been open to even considering because of your weight. And I, and I don't want to always focus on just weight, but it's, it's your well-being and your level of health. Like, you know, maybe there's things that you don't, that you don't wear, right? Maybe you don't like to go to the pool or the beach because you don't like to be in a bathing suit. Maybe you hate summer because you hate wearing tank tops, right? Like, there's, there's, um, what am I trying to say? Like, there's results or, or um, outcomes. That's not the right word. There's an environment you create around yourself based on how you think and see yourself. And so to, it's, it's like playing, okay, here's the best analogy. It's like you've been an actor in a movie, right? This is the movie of your life that you're living right now. And you're like, I want to be, I want, I want a different movie. <laughs> and so now you need to study a new character to play a new role in the new movie of your life. The movie being your life, the character being you, the role being you. And so you need to be a different, a different character, right? Does that make sense at all? Okay. Um, it is 10.15, so we're done. We're going to finish with a set of 20 push-ups because we're doing upper body, but also because my goal is to do get back to 100 push-ups a day. So I've done 20 this morning. I'm going to do a quick 20 here right now. Ready? I already did my core, you guys. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten more. Ten, nine. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Great work today, guys. Thank you for joining me. I appreciate you hanging out here with me, listening to me babble. Um, don't forget, if you're on TikTok, follow me on Facebook. I would love that. I would love to connect with you and help you towards your goals this year. Um, connect with me in Messenger. If you want to chat more about either the workouts, um, my workshop, which is free coming up or um, the five day drop. Have an awesome day. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Same time, 930.